This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. This is Race Your Game. Good morning, I'm Frida Liu. And a great idea is only as successful as a person who's able to convince others that it's great. Ida Anand joins us to identify the four quadrants of communication that will enhance our ability to influence others and offer tips and tricks to effectively get our point across. And Ida Anand is from AAA Leadership Coaching Consulting. Welcome, Ida. You know, we were talking, uh, our topic today is on the secrets to influencing and, commu- and it's about communication, right? Yes. Now, we've had many people come on talking about communication skills and tips now how how is this different or you know what did you discover along the way okay thank you Freda um, for having me today communication you know we have so many ways we look at communication a lot of people say communication is, is when I talk mm. is when I put my point across but what we forget is sometimes communication is also listening. Communication is also interpretation. Communication is also finding out what they are not saying as opposed to what they are also saying. Mm -hmm. So what I found fascinating about communication is that we all have our own interpretation. Mm -hmm. And in my work as a coach, Mm -hmm. as a trainer with so many uh, levels of management, I found that we need to find an understanding of what communication is for us. Mm. And that's how I came about coming with my purpose-driven purpose driven leadership mm. and to be able to structure communication so that it is understood, so that it can be used for your own, for, for whatever you want in your life. Mm. For example, let's say with your, if, when your mother and with your children, your intention of communication might not just be to give them information is to discipline them, is to get them to sit still. So you don't see communication as how CEOs would see it, as you want to inspire. Mm. So that is how I came about my purpose-driven leadership Mm. modules and also to be able to put really across with my participants, with my coaches, with my clients on what is communication to you. Mm. And once you have identified your intention behind your communication, then I gave them these four quadrants. Okay. And then you can use whatever it is you want in that particular okay. situation. So before we get into the four quadrants, like how was that process of discovery for you? You know, before you became a coach, you were doing other things as well. You know, how did you come to that aha moment on how communication is so important? Right. Great question, Frida. Well, you know, as a person, I, I, I went through many businesses. I started with my own landscaping business. And when I was with my landscaping business, I had two business partners. Mm-hmm. And they were a lot older than me. One was a guy, one was a woman. Mm-hmm. And I was the younger one. And I felt, you know, I could never really connect with them. You know, that we were working together. We were already always having disagreements. Mm-hmm. And I always felt I just couldn't catch up with them. Mm-hmm. I was lost half of the time. And that's when I first said, okay, something's missing here. Either we don't understand each other or I'm, I'm really just not available. I don't have the same kind of mindset. Okay. So that started the questions. That started the inquiry. Mm. There's something missing here. Mm. And then I went into sales. Mm. I was in CIMB sales. Mm. And that, of course, my job was to meet as many people as, and to, to convince them to, to invest with CIMB. That's when I realized, okay, I need a strategy. Okay. You can't just talk to people and get them to invest. So I came, and then there's a strategy that I came as I went through different times of my life, mm. different areas, mm. different needs to get people to buy in. Okay. So what is the most powerful persuasion uh, strategy we can instantly implement to, you know, in, in the area of business, I guess, to generate more money in that case? Right. Okay. So after I got through this point I, I was uh, I was one of the top performers at CIMB sales I realised okay I really love coaching I really want to share what I got you know after all these years of closing and meeting people I love co- I love coaching my clients I love coaching my downlines so I came up with this triple A influence tactics mm. okay so how do we strategize or how do we influence people number one we are all human beings we're not robots mm. So we all ultimately want somebody who cares about us. Like even if you go into a shop, if the shop owner doesn't even make eye contact with you, even if the stuff is something that you really want to get, you'll say, okay, I might come again another time or you might think twice Mm. about your purchase. Mm. So number one is 
get to know your clients, not just be interested, mm. be obsessed. Mm. What do they like? What are their fears? What are their visions? What are their targets? What are the risks they are taking? Mm. One of my clients, I have a lot of cli- uh, clients in the development and uh, development and building, mm. building agencies. So, you know, they have a lot of risks at hand. If they don't finish a project, they get charged per day, hundreds mm. and thousands because of the investors yeah. they put in. So, you know, one of the things that they said, Ida, you know, I have to get this done on time. If not, we're paying 100, 200,000 a day because the the platform is not being used, mm. you know. So, I, I needed to really understand the kind of risks, the kind of fears my clients were having. So I structured my program. So how to get them to work efficiently with with zero you know, lag time. Th- those are the kinds of things that if you really want to influence is to really get to know your clients, right. not just what they want, also what their challenges mm-hmm. are, what their fears are. That's number one. Mm. Number two is visibility. You know, in our current culture of Facebook, social media, it's very easy to create visibility. Mm. But what kind of a quality of visibility? Mm. Is it just taking self, you know, taking pictures of what you do every day? Or is it visibility in the form of information? Visibility with a purpose. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Like selfie only. (laughs) Yes. How would you really get them to see, oh, you know, if I engage this company, what what is the constant visibility that I can see and what is the value that they can give me Mm. you know and have it be constant so one of the things that you could do you know we all have the ability to speak Mm. to share every single person every one of us Frida have like we shared earlier you Mm. you felt you could learn anything from anybody Mm. every person comes into your life to teach you something Mm. new Mm. so at any point in time you could you know, you could create a video, three or four minute video. This mm. is what I do. Every time they've gone through my training, I will give them a series of videos mm-hmm. that can support all the distinctions, all the things that they learned in my training. And what that creates is, and uh, it is a deeper relationship. Yeah. Even if it's not into, you know, we're talking together, but they get to see additional value to what you can give, mm. and it's constant. Right. So keep in touch, be there, share, always add value. Right. And of course, that leads to the third uh, tactic of influencing is to give more than what they expect. Mm. Add tremendous value to the point that, point that they feel, wow, I'm getting so much, I can't, I can't keep up. Okay. You know, like give them newsletters, tips, videos, you know. To the point that they can't ignore you. Mm. You are the main option. There's nobody else in the industry that they can think of. Wow, you're the main option. Huh? Yes. Um, we're talking about the secrets to influencing. I'm here with uh, Ida Adnan from AAA Leadership Coaching Consulting. Uh, we'll talk about the four quadrants uh, of communication after this. So stay tuned to Race Again. BFM 89.9. Bloggers for Malaysia. BFM 89.9. It's Raising Game. Good morning. This is Frida Liu. I'm here with Aida Adnan from AAA Leadership Coaching Consulting. We're talking about secrets to influencing. And, you know, earlier on, uh, Aida was sharing a little bit about uh, some techniques on how you can actually persuade people. And, of course, you know, you're talking about care about the people you're with, you know, about their fears and all their, you know, secrets if you have to, right? What they are concerned about. Uh, visibility and visibility with a purpose and uh, and give more and I think that's about going the extra mile and all that but you know so one of the things as well when you when you meet someone how mm-hmm. do you create uh, that that you know the connection immediately what can you do a, a rapport a rapport mm. yes that's the, that's the word Frida rapport is power mm. in any organization in any situation when you can get that rapport is everything yeah. not just that that person likes you, that you feel, oh, okay, we can connect. Yeah. But there is a common ground. Mm. There's common values that you guys can talk about. Mm. So what I've found in many years of doing sales and, and in organizations is that we overestimate the power of rapport. Mm. We think that, oh, I got rapport, you know, the new, the new guy that came into the office I feel that I can connect with him. Mm. But, you know, rapport doesn't have to be natural. 
we can actually create it from zero. And real success comes from being able to create rapport with anybody and everybody. Right. It's easy to create rapport with people we like. Yeah. But what if that person yeah. is totally the person you couldn't really... If you met them in a bar, if you met them in a library, you, you would stay away from that person, mm. right? But what if you are really committed to creating good values and rapport with people you could connect with any kind of personality so how do you do that i found that uh, i read the i read the story about dr milton erickson mm-hmm. he's a very famous hypnotherapist and psychotherapist many many years ago and he was well known for being able to observe he was a medical doctor but he specialized in hypnotherapy and he suffered from polio, okay. which meant most of his life he was in a wheelchair. So what he did was he kept observing different, different people without actually speaking to them. And he wondered, how could I actually connect with all these people mm-hmm. without even, because he was in a wheelchair, he couldn't stand up yeah. and walk to you. So when he had his patients for psychotherapy come and sit with him, and, you know, they would usually come in with, with a slouched, you know, posture. They Mm. were tired, they were depressed, you know, and they would talk in a very slow tone. Mm. And, you know, he studied that you don't have to be always upbeat. It doesn't mean that you're upbeat, you bring that other person up. To convince his patients to actually get out of that state, Mm -hmm. he actually started by mirroring them. Okay. He started the technique of mirroring and matching. So when his patients would come and sit and say, Doctor, I just have no hope. Mm. You know, I'm tired of this and I'm tired of my family. My children just just won't change. And then what Dr. Milton said, started to do was he also, I see. (laughs) Okay. Really? Hmm. I'm so sorry to hear that. However... I think that, you know, it would be a good idea if you want you started to talk to them more. So what he did was he mirrored their body language and their t- tone of voice. But in his words, he started to coach them and started mm. to guide them towards where he wanted them to go. So that is how you create instant rapport. Okay. So you mirror them first and then you lift them up to a higher place. Yes, meet them where they are. Yeah, right. Because words can't help that. Certain people, sometimes in communication, words aren't everything. Yeah. 70% of our communication is non-verbal. Mm. Only 30% use your words. So that's one thing we need to get. It's non-verbal cues. Mm. So how does that come in? It comes in through your tone of voice. Match the person's tone of voice. Eye contact. Maintain eye contact. So She's maintaining are... eye contact with me now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also your body language. If they're slouching, slouch. If they're upbeat, be upbeat, yeah. you know. And what happens is an un, is a subtle consciousness, a subtle alignment starts to happen. Mm. And suddenly both of you will be thinking, oh, hey, this person is really making sense. Mm. And that's when instant rapport happens okay. it, without even using words. Okay, so now, now you know, we've been talking about it leading up to the four quadrants as well. You know, how can you actually um, help people in this? How can you sustain energy and motivations once you successfully influence them to change, you know, through that, that process? What then? All right. So we're up to this point where I felt was really what I wanted to talk about today. Mm. Because all of us belong to an organization. Mm. Like for you, Freda, you have around 20, 30 in your team. Mm. And we all, whether we like it or not, we belong or we exist in a group. Right. And there's always other people we are influencing, whether we realize it or not. Mm. So it's really important to be able to, number one, be aware and to know that how can I control my 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 emotions or my speech so mm. that everybody get is able to sustain a positive yeah. um, energy so in maintaining a positive energy within your team within your family mm. first because this is what i do i i conduct trainings you know in 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 companies and in my trainings is really high energy we jump up, we dance, we, we play games. So they're really happy after two days. Okay. They're like, Aida, this is something so different. But then a lot of companies do that. So that's why in my training, I just wanted to just touch on it a bit. 
the importance of follow up coaching mm-hmm. because a lot of times training is very impactful on its own yeah. but it doesn't last right after two weeks you'll see your teams if there some of them are tired or depressed or just not unmotivated it will come back back to normal right? okay, okay back to business okay. Right? right so when i came up with these four quadrants is with the intention to see how can we sustain it mm. because we all go through life mm. Life is not always a better road. Life happens. Huh? Life happens. So things will start coming. You'll be hit. You'll be pushed. How do you sustain it? Mm. So the four quadrants was created so that it will show you, number one, that you're human. Mm. Let go of being superhuman that you'll never get upset, that you'll never be hit and you'll never feel stuck. Mm. That's bound to happen. Yeah. But how to turn it around. So four quadrants is based on us as a human being and how we function. So the first quadrant is personal energy. Mm. Meaning you are responsible for the energy you bring to a certain space. Okay. So it, the first quadrant talks about how you want to set up your energy for the day. You know, I have a few practices I do in the morning. Breathing. Mm. How to breathe is a five minutes fire breathing, power breathing. Mm. And then, of course, I always share with my uh, the top management and those who have high stress jobs, <laughs> meditate. <laughs> Take 10 minutes, no matter how busy it is at home. No matter if it's just, if it means you just have to go and lock yourself in the bathroom okay. from your kids. Sit down, give yourself 10 minutes of silence. Mm. Then you'll see your energy is more contained throughout the day. Okay. Number one, that's personal energy, quadrant number one. Mm -hmm. Once you know that you are responsible for your energy, then you'll be able to channel it to your team. Mm. So quadrant number two is the teaming. Mm -hmm. Within this, I also have a few strategies on how to connect. So teaming, how to motivate your team, how to speak to your team, how to bring, use what kind of words and culture to your team. Mm. And in teams, I always name them as personalities. Within your team, you have different personalities of teams. It could be, you know, rather than say characteristic, I like to look at personalities because personality means that there's just one uh, part of them. It's not all of them. Mm -hmm. So you can actually mold them and recreate them to be the best that they can be. That's number two. Mm -hmm. Number three is vision. So the, again, we're talking about the four quadrants of purpose-driven leadership. Mm-hmm. So every purpose, I always believe you need to have a purpose. Mm. And you don't have to be the, the senior management right. or the boss. Mm. Even as an executive, even as the creative director, you have a vision for yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you, once you extend it to your team and to others, then you start leading already. Mm-hmm. So it's important that you establish a purpose-based vision. So a vision, what is a vision? A vision is where you can see five years from now and how, what are the dynamics of it? Okay. That it doesn't just... So it can be the dynamics of what the show will be like, the yes. vision of what the show... Okay. How your people are going to be like, mm. even for your family. What's right. the vision for your family, for your children? Mm. Right. And then lastly, the most important glue that puts everything together mm. is crystal clear communication. Right. Like we talked about how to influence and how to speak and how, how to listen. Okay. How is it crystal clear? <laughs> ah. Right. Uh. So crystal clear meaning in every word that you say, you want to be able to, number one, have an intention behind your communication. Like for me, today, I, I, I said to myself, what do I want to create in this interview right. with you and with BFM? And I said, clarity and power. Mm. I, I have an intention behind what it is that I want to create. First, we set an intention. Mm-hmm. And then only you, you plan out. Like, you know, I plan out what was it that I want to dis- discuss mm-hmm. with you. And you shared with me what was it that you wanted to ask. But it crystal clear meaning is crystal clear in your mind first. Mm. What is the intention, not the expectation? And then there'll be different types of. Um, if, in my training, I have one training just focused on clear communication. Right. What to say? What are the words? What are the phrases? So, for example, one of, one of it is to always have an example behind every distinction, behind every point that you say. Give an example. 
For example? For example? <laughs> so, let's say all these four quadrants. Uh-huh. The example would be when you're in a meeting. When Let's say you say, okay, we want to go... This is how far we want to go. We want to have 10 clients by the end of this quarter. Mm. So what are the clients that I expect? I expect the the ones in land banking, the ones in retail. Ah. I want this kind of client. So you give examples of what type of clients, mm-hmm. what industry. Mm. So you are responsible. When you say crystal clear communication, you take responsibility on how they will understand. Okay. If your team doesn't understand, then it's your that's your, your doing. Yes, your doing. Mm. So when you take crystal clear communication is to plan out your your communication in a way that they will understand. Even if they don't, you get back to them and say, which area did you not understand? Mm. Okay. All right. And, and I just want to touch a little bit on the point number two, you know, when you talk about teaming and its mm-hmm. personalities. How, what, what, what are some ways you could relate to every personality? Maybe? All right. Yeah. So one major aspect I talk about is listening. Mm. We, it is so important, it is so vital to master listening when you're with people. Listen to what is important to them. Listen to their response to what you say. So when you talk about personalities in a team, is being able to see there are certain, uh, certain team members that would really love to be acknowledged. Like for me with my team, I know there's three of my team members who who when I say, great job, Wafi, and he'll be beaming. Mm. Or when we are doing games, he'll be the one that will be coming up front and to help me out. So there are, there are people in your team who are, who are more receptive to being acknowledged. They want to be highlighted. Mm. But there are some, they'll be more, uh, they'll appreciate more if you give them challenges. Mm. They're not really going for the limelight. They'll be like, you know, they'll get bored if they do the same thing again and again. Okay. So as a leader, how would, you, how would you lead them? How would you identify who are the ones that... Re- because you have uh, so many... You have to pe- find out what motivates each of them individually. Yes, yeah. and be able to speak in their language. Mm. So what does that, what does that need? You, you can't be talking to them all the time. You mm. want to be listening. You want to observe in your meetings how many, what, 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 what kind of ideas they give out, mm. how they respond to you. Do they fade out when you start talking about statistics? Mm. Then those are your creative people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll see that when you start dishing out all the statistics, you'll see their, their eyes glaze over. So you'll need to get back their attention uh, okay. by moving about. You know, okay. so in teaming, that's that is uh, that is a major element to be able to listen, mm-hmm. and um, it's not a skill that a lot of us have the patience for, mm-hmm. but it pays off tremendously when you can say, "Ha, huh, I want to sit down and listen," before you can even con- you know think about your thoughts and give a response. Listen first, and then you'll get extra information. All right. Uh, Thanks for being with us. Uh, It's been uh, educational for me uh, on the secrets to influencing. I've been speaking to Ida Adnan from AAA Leadership Coaching Consulting. This is Raise Your Game, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.